If you have your Bible with you this morning, please turn with me to the word of the Lord. Found in the book of John chapter 15. The word of the Lord found in the book of John chapter 15 and beginning at verse number 16. That's John chapter 15 and beginning at verse number 16. The Bible says, Did ye... You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Also turn with me to the word of the Lord in Jeremiah chapter 29 and 11. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I'd like to talk to you today, my friends, for a few moments here, a man chosen by God. A man chosen by God or chosen by God. Here in the word of God, my friends, the Bible is teaching us that we here in society today ought to be willing to stand up for the word of God. Many of us today have been chosen by God to do a particular work for the Lord, but we will not stand up and do what God has called us to do. The Bible says, you did not choose, you did not choose me, but I chose you. My friend, God has chosen you for a particular work in these last and evil days and you will not stand up and do what God has ordained for you to do. There are many of you out there today that have the great opportunity of being able to go into certain places that other people have not the opportunity to go but you will not go because you feel as though that God has not chose you. But my friend, the Bible says, the word of God says that God has chosen you to do a particular work for the things of Almighty God. Can you imagine in your mind going into an area in society today where there may not even be a church established? Mm -hmm. And you say, well, Elder McCray, I'm not a preacher. Uh, I'm not a deacon. Uh, I haven't been licensed. I'm not ordained. Mm -hmm. But my friend, the Bible says that God has chosen you to do a particular work for him. Mm -hmm. And you can be that individual that can open and establish the church for the people to come and to receive the word of God. Hallelujah. You can be that individual to stand up for the things of God and to stand up for the ways of God and to stand up for the will of God. I want to talk to you today for a few minutes here about three things. Character, the man that God could not use, and whom he loves, he chastens. My friend, your character as a man of God is very crucial and important in life. A moral ethical life is beneficial to you if you are in the will of God. Mm -hmm. And my friend, an ethical lifestyle is a blessing in society today because many people today have taken down the ethical society of their lives and now they're living any old kind of way, but God does not want that to be so in your life. The Bible says, I know the, pl I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. God got plans to bless you and to and to prosper you, uh huh. And yes, He does wants to bless you, and yes, He does wants to prosper you. Mm -hmm. But my friend, you have to repent and get in the will of Almighty God. You have to turn away from sin and turn to the things of the Lord. The Bible says you did not. You see, see, we think that, uh huh, God. We think that we choose God, but no, my friend, 
You do not choose God. God chooses you. And he has ordained you and blessed you so that you can step out and go into the things of God and begin to tell people about the will and the ways of the Lord. See, my friend, the best witness is you, yourself. You are the best witness that God can use. You are the best individual that God can use. See, because, see, your life, hallelujah, is the life that God has saved. Mm -hmm. See, when I was a young man, I'm going to talk about myself. When I was a young man, I never thought in, my, in the history of my life that God would call me into the ministry to be a preacher. I never thought anything like that. Uh huh. See, my friend, God calls the man and not the man calls God. And I said, I asked God several times. I asked God many times. I said, Lord, you got the wrong person for the job. You got the wrong individual for the job. You got the wrong person for the job. But my friend God said, no, I got the right individual for the job. And I thank God that he called me to the ministry to be able to stand up for the word of God. Because my friend, my life was a wreck. Hallelujah. But God turned my life around because, see, I, he chose me. Glory be to God. He chose a wretch undone. He chose somebody that was out there in the gutter. See, some folk want to think that their life, uh-huh, that their life when they're living in this sophisticated lifestyle and everything is beautiful and everything is fine and, and everything is wonderful and all the roses are around them. But no, my friend, there wasn't a lot of roses around my life. Uh-huh. There was sin in my life, but God took the sin out. Glory be to God. A long time ago, and he called me to the work of the ministry in Jesus' mighty name. And I'm so glad that there was a preacher out there that believed in me. Hallelujah. That believed in me. Glory be to God. And said, okay, now it's time for you to preach the word of God. In season and out of season. And to rebuke and reprove with all long suffering. Glory be to God. And that preacher was Pastor Thomas L. Stillman. All y'all know him. Amen. Praise God. Back in 92, I was licensed to preach the word of the Lord. Glory be to God. But my friend, I was preaching way before then because my life had to turn around. And I'm so glad, glory be to God, that God said I can use an individual like me. But my friend, here in the word of God, chosen by God is you. You are the one that's chosen by God. You are the one that God wants to use in these last and in these evil days. You said, no, Elder McCray, I'm not eloquent. No, Elder McCray, I don't know any homilies. No, Elder McCray, I don't know the word of God from uh, Revelations uh, to, from Matthews to Revelations or boom, Genesis, <coughs> excuse me, to Revelation. My friend, God is looking at your heart. He wants to come into your heart in order for him to bless you, in order for him to redeem you, in order for him to save you. He wants to come inside of your heart, a man chosen by God. He may not be the most, glory be to God, the most eloquent man. He may not be the most well-dressed man. He may not have the big bank account. He, he may not have the best job. And he may not have the best intelligence. Amen. But God said, I want to use this individual to step out in the things of the Lord. I know the plans I have for you, huh? declare the Lord, huh? plan to prosper you huh? and to bless you huh? in the work of the ministry. Huh? Mm -hmm, huh? I have plans to bless you. Huh? I have plans to bless your life like never, ever before. My friend, there are people out there today that God wants to use. But then there's also uh -huh, people in the Bible that God could not use. And the reason why... God could not use these individuals was because they turned a deaf ear to the things of God. They turned, instead of turning God on, they turned God off. 
My friend, I do not want you to be that individual to turn God off. I'm talking to those, now I'm not talking, I'm not talking to your, to, to these people right here in West Virginia. No, I'm not talking to these people uh, in New York. No, I'm talking to those that are maybe overseas. Somebody over there in Jamaica. Huh? Somebody over there, maybe over there in Trinidad, over there in Tibet. Huh? Uh -huh. Somebody over there in Africa, my friends. Uh, see, see, we, we, we don't want it here. Uh -huh. We don't want it here. Uh -huh. But my friend, I'm talking to somebody that may be on the internet listening to me today to hear the word of God. Chosen by God is you. You are the one that God has chosen to step out and to do the will of God. Mm -hmm. And you may not have, have it all. Glory be to God. You may not know where the, the money is going to come from to travel around the world. You may not know where the money is going to come from to be a blessing to society. You may not know who's going to sponsor you. You may not know who's going to bless you. But my friend, I'm telling you today that there is an individual out there that God can use and that God wants to use. And that individual is you. Hallelujah. God wants to bless you. He wants to use you. He wants to build you up. You said, Ellen McCray, I don't know how to speak. I stutter when I speak. I stammer when I speak. I can't get all my words out when I speak. They laugh at me when I speak. My friend, people been laughing at me from 1992 and it's 2014 and they still laughing at me today. But I'm here to tell you today that God's got a word down Mm -hmm. On the inside, huh? you can laugh all you want. Huh? You can make fun all you want. Huh? You can crack jokes all you want. Huh? But my friend, I'm here to tell you that God has a man. Hallelujah. Huh? To use huh? in these last and in these evil days. I'm not singling out women. Huh? But I'm saying that the men need to stand up huh? for the word of God. Huh? The men huh? need to stand up for the things of God. Huh? The men huh? need to stand up for the will of God. Huh? See, my friend, there's too many men out there. Huh? Mm -hmm. huh? You got soft things. You got soft on the things of God. Huh? And you don't want to stand up huh, for the word of God. Huh? But my friend, when you begin to stand up for Jesus, huh? when you begin to stand up for the word of God, huh? when you begin to stand up huh, for the will of God, huh? when you begin to stand up for the ways of God, huh? you begin to rebuke the devil. Huh? You begin to bind the forces of the works of the enemy. Huh? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Huh? You begin to rebuke and bind. Those devils in Jesus' mighty name. See, the enemy does not want this word to come out. Huh? But I'm here to tell you, my friend, huh, that God huh, wants to use you on today. Mm -hmm, huh? But my friend, huh, it starts huh, with getting established huh, in the things of God. Huh? It starts by getting saved. Huh? It starts by getting born again. Huh? It starts by coming to Jesus. Huh? It starts by lifting up the name of Jesus. Huh? Mm -hmm, huh? See, my friend, huh, see God, he wants some worshipers. Huh? He wants some men. Huh? <coughs> Excuse me, huh, that wants to worship him. Huh? He wants some men huh, that wants to stand up huh, in the midst of the congregation and worship him. Huh, and magnify him and lift up holy hands huh, and call on the name of the Lord. Huh? See, my friend, huh, God wants somebody huh, that's willing to stand up for the things of the Lord. Huh? Will you be that individual today huh, chosen by God huh, to stand up huh, for the will of God, huh, to stand up huh, for the ways of God? See, my friend, today, in today's society, we think that preaching is eloquent. But my friend, preaching ain't no eloquent. We think that preaching is eloquent and that preaching brings money. But my friend, I don't know where you got that from. And I don't know who told you that. I don't know where you see that at. But I'm here to tell you, my friend, preaching, it starts with getting down on your knees and calling on the name of Jesus and allowing somebody to see your life as a blessing 
Glory to God. I'm not saying that the preacher doesn't have to have a change of clothes. I'm not saying that the preacher doesn't have to look nice and look good and look presentable. But I'm here to tell you, my friend, preaching is not a money job game. No, my friend, we think that preaching is a money game. But my friend, I'm here to tell you, you are sadly mistaken. And you are being rudely awakened by the word of God. But my friend, God has chosen the foolish thing to confound the wise. And it's foolishness to preach the word of God. It's foolishness to come up to this radio station Sunday morning after Sunday morning to preach the word of the Lord. But I'm here to tell you, my friend, that God's got a man that's going to stand up for the ways of God. God's got a man that's going to rebuke. He's going to rebuke the hand of the enemy. He's going to bind the spirit of sickness that's in your life. He's going to rebuke that devil that's coming against your son in his mind. Your son mind has been deranged for the works, by the works of the enemy. And his mind ha, is bind up ha, by the works of the devil. Ha. But my friend, ha, I'm here to tell you ha, that there's a man of God out there to pray for him, ha, to seek to seek the hand of the Lord ha, for the life of your child, ha, for the life of your child. Ha. Mm -hmm. There's a young girl out there. Ha. She can't stop cursing you out. Ha. She only 12 and 13 years old, ha, but she can't stop cursing on her mama, huh? but I'm here to tell you huh, that that's a devil huh, on the inside. Huh? Oh, you say, I'm crazy. don't start that. Huh? But there's a demon huh, down on the inside huh, of that young girl, huh? and the power of God huh, is able to deliver her and set her free, huh? but it takes a person huh, chosen huh, by God huh, to deliver huh, that young lady's mind, huh? to deliver huh, the filth huh, that's coming out of her mind. Huh? Mm -hmm, huh? My friend, huh, mother, you cry long enough. Huh? You shed tears long enough. Huh? Now it's time to stand up huh, for the word of God. Huh? It's time to take your children to church. Huh? See, we are, that's the problem. Huh? We don't take our children to church enough. Huh? Mm -hmm. We don't sit them huh, in the house of God enough. Huh? Mm -hmm. But I'm here to tell you, my friend, huh, when you begin to stand up huh, for the will of God huh, and stand up huh, for the ways of God huh, and stand up huh, for the power of God. Huh? See, you're blessing huh, and in the club. Huh? 